All right, nice. Just briefly introduce yourself, your name, where are you from? Uh, I'm Kota. I am 27 years old and I'm from Tokyo. Tokyo? Yeah. Wow, so you grew up here? Born and raised, Born yeah. Born and raised here? Yeah. Oh my God. Can you tell us about, a little bit about your background here in Tokyo, how you grew up? Uh, so my mom is from Senegal. My nice. dad is Japanese. Okay. And uh, I grew up mostly uh, with my mom more. And uh, she remarried to a French guy and I grew up in the French environment. So I went to the French school in Tokyo. And everything. Nice. I'm from I'm from Ghana. For real? Yeah, Senegal. You know, Senegal is in West Africa. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm from Ghana. Man. And so how, how is Tokyo? How is Tokyo? Um, I mean, for me, who got used to live here, it's just like it's changing a lot, which is good. You know, it's uh, it's more open-minded than it used to be back then. So yeah. Well, did you feel a little difficulties growing up as a uh, Miss Rich Child? I mean, at first I did, cause uh, when I was in the Japanese like preschools. It was difficult for me to adjust to this um, to the environment because the kids didn't really understand what it was it like to be mixed right, in that right. time, and so they they were kind of like bullying me a little bit and stuff like that, calling me names and shit like that. And uh, afterwards, when I went to the French school, and I felt like more happy because it was I was surrounded with people who were like me, who were half and had different backgrounds, and it was multi national, multi international, and it was a lot of diversity and. I'm really grateful that I went there, but now it's just um, more open-minded. So you know, it's quite fun to experience that at the moment. <laughs> so if you look at like way back when you were a little young boy growing up, mm. as compared to now, what are some of the major things you've seen in how people receive you uh, now as compared to before? I mean, I think they're really curious. I think like um, when people sometimes I get the impression that when they ask us questions about where we're from so I, first I thought like I'm taking a little bit offensive because I'm also half Japanese right. but then it's great because it kind of gives people a curiosity of knowing the background and knowing about the country which is which means that people are willing to learn about you as a person so I felt I felt treated and respected in a good way so did you enjoy or used to enjoy some privileges coming from different backgrounds like from Japanese background and African background, well, do you enjoy some privileges as a, as I have, a young man? I have a Japanese passport. Oh, nice! Oh, nice! And so, that's one of the most powerful passports in the world. Yeah. Okay. It's just like it's just great to have it uh, when you come back from a trip and immigration. You don't have to do like the line, so you can just go directly, pass it through the machine. And uh, what other privileges? Oh man, I think <laughs> that's the only one. Um, no, I'm, I think I'm privileged to learn to have learned French. Because my mom speaks it, because she's from Senegal. And I'm really grateful to have speak three languages, and uh, I don't use French at work that much, but I use it with my friends and my family. So I'm grateful to have learned French because it made me hang out with a good circle, and I'm really, really well surrounded by good friends. So as, as a young boy, and even now, what do you do different to build your confidence? As a Miss Richard, growing up in a site like Japan, uh, it took me a while to get out of my uh, cocoon. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I like to call it. Uh, I was a really, really shy kid, uh, but uh, I think after college it started to go crazy. It was like the time to party and stuff like that, and I decided to be more outgoing rather than like closing myself to people. And uh, I don't know how it came. To be honest, it just came naturally like that. I just kept talking, 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 and I became much more social. I'm really <laughs> go out in the social circle, you know. Um, I don't know how I got. I honestly, I don't know how I got it. It's just, it just came like that. It's just like uh, without me wanting it, it just, it went like that. I mean, you grew up in Tokyo. What are some of the most interesting places you can you can explore uh, as a young guy coming to Tokyo? I went. Um, I was going to Izu, um, Izu Shimoda. It's a place a little bit far from Tokyo. It's like four hours by train, three hours stops. And uh, I used to go there every weekend with my father and my mother and beautiful beach, good vibes, good restaurant. And honestly, it's just like paradise there. It's like when you go there, you take like a big puff of air and when, you, when it's time to go back to Tokyo, you don't feel like coming back to Tokyo. Is Tokyo considered one of the most expensive cities in the world? Mm. Is it really true? I mean, it depends on your lifestyle, you know? Okay. Yeah, honestly. I, um, I have, I have, I'm all right, you know, it's just uh, I don't have any problems, so I, tr I try to manage a little bit, I try to be careful on what I spend my money on, and no, it's just, it's just really great, um, because like, compared to like France, for example, like, my cousin told me it was a nightmare, and when I went to Senegal, the money went so fast, it was just crazy, you know, 
and I just noticed that like I'm privileged, I'm like grateful to be living in the city where economically it's easy to sustain. But I really wish that like they they could raise the yen's value <laughs> in other countries because when I went to France, I it kind of hurt me. <laughs> so you you've been to Africa a couple of times? Yeah. How many times have you been to Africa? Well, Senegal now, I've been there like seven times at least. Seven times? Yeah. When was the first time in Senegal? I was three years older. Two uh, years older? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, at what age, like, you could see, like, okay, I'm in a different a different environment. Oh, you know, I mean, for a two-year-old, I don't think uh, they don't, they know, like, they're, okay. they, I don't think they know that they, about their surroundings. They're just in their bubble. I think that's what I was around that time. Then I think growing up a little bit older, I, we would go back often. It was amazing, really. It's, How was uh, the reception when you go back home? Because in Ghana, when we see people who are mixed race, there's kind of they enjoy a little bit of privilege because everybody wanna okay, you are like more like a white person, right? And so how do people really receive you when you go back to Africa? Um, well, actually, I went back like last like in July, and I uh, stayed there for three weeks. I haven't gone back there for seven years. Ooh. And um, they treated me like a, like a normal, you know, like uh, it was just cool, cool people. Uh, my cousin, like he's like he's like my twin brother in a way, you know. He's just it's just like we talk, we catch up. It's as if like everything that we haven't talked about seven years ago, and we talked about seven years ago, we still kept the same relationship. It's just like it's like we never left. It's like I saw him yesterday. That's that's the kind of uh, welcome that I got. And uh, from my grandpa, my aunts, and my uncles, they asked me what I do now, and uh, if everything is all right. It, they didn't really care like about the fact that I was mixed. They was just, they just happy to see me, you know. Nice, and, uh, nice. This, this might be a little bit hard. Did you really face any form of identity crisis growing up? Uh, I did, actually. Uh, when people were making a lot of fun of me, I remember telling my mom that I hated being black. Oh my God! Because I live in China, and sometimes you are being called like "Hey, Ren," me like a black person in China, mm -hmm. and you get a lot of stares because you're different. Yeah. People ask questions about my hair and my skin color, and I mean. But the funny thing is, like, now I found out that like uh, since I'm mixed and uh, I have a great culture, I don't really mind well, it at all. Mind, right? Yeah, I'm, nice. it's you know, it's it's all about acceptance and also the fact that. Uh, you know, you, you notice like sometimes in Japan people look at you in a weird way because they're like, you're like, wow, your skin tone is different, your hair is different. Like, why is it so puffy? I think it's funny, really. At first I found it offensive, but I found now I found it funny. It's just like, okay, <laughs> just like I'm not gonna, don't worry, I'm not gonna bite. You know, <laughs> I'm a normal person. <laughs> what is your favorite African food? Mafe. Mafe in Senegal. Oh, what is it? I know, it's, I, know, uh, I know jollof is very popular. You know jollof? Uh, no. You don't know jollof? No. Oh, jollof is a very popular rice dish. There's always a kind of a rivalry between Nigeria and Ghana when it comes to jollof rice. Mm. So when you go, just check jollof rice. J-O-L-L-O-F. Jollof rice. Jollof rice. Jollof rice. Yeah. Okay. So Mafi is your favorite Senegalese food? Yeah. Uh, my mom used to cook it here. You know, it takes time to cook uh, the Senegalese African food. food. African yeah. food. It's, <laughs> it's, it's made with love. It takes forever. Yeah. I know that. It's made with love. Like my mom would wake up at 10 during the weekend. And she would finish around like uh, I don't know, like 5 p.m. or something like that. She would spend all day in the kitchen. We couldn't, we weren't able to talk to her. But it's just the fact is like it, when it's your mom who makes the food, it's always good. Nice. Yeah. So do you, do you really feel proud of your background coming from two different backgrounds? Do you feel proud as a young man? Oh, most absolutely. Nice. Yeah. I feel like uh, since now, now like there's more and more of people with different backgrounds who are also half Japanese. It's uh, it's a good lesson that I don't know. I'm forgetting my words. Uh, I mean, to be honest, I think it's the best thing to have as a person, especially here, because you come from two different worlds and you have to find the right balance to live here or live in another country. You know, and also it all depends on your education and uh, your values. Like it's really important. Say so as long as you keep that, you have nothing to worry about. So do you think Japan is more receptive now to? people who are coming from different backgrounds? I think a little bit, yeah, yeah, I think so. I'm um, really, uh, I haven't seen anything like uh, that's that offended me recently around in Japan, you know, so I think currently it's, it's going all right, you know, they're accepting. I think they're more happy of people coming into the country since Corona was like the hardest time of our lives, so 
it, it, I think it's really great that like it's more and more different people. Uh, yeah, it's it's fun, really. I mean, it's my first time in Japan. My first time in Tokyo. And it's I, your first time. Yeah, I love I love the fact that I'm seeing people from different backgrounds. You know, like I've been seeing videos of this place over the internet and. But now I'm here, it's, it's amazing to experience Japan for the first time. And how does it feel like to be here for real? Like man, man, it's it's, it's unreal. I can I can still believe like I'm walking around the most busiest zebra crossing in the whole world. And man. you came during the time where they were doing the summer festival. Oh the my! The last one, yeah. What is the message to young guys, man, in your situation when you were a young boy growing up and you were being bullied because you're different? What is your your message to young guys like you? Just tell them something so that it can build your confidence up. Uh, well, number one, I would say uh, don't ever deny your origins and your values because you can't change the way you're born nice. you have to embrace that you have to love yourself and uh, make sure you're surrounded with good people good friends and uh, also do not be scared to talk you know it's uh, it's okay to talk about feelings don't repress them you know we're human we're not invincible and uh, that's all I have to say for them nice, yeah. nice, man. nice. can we get some pizza together bro of course cool of course, you, got, you, got, you got IG